Thank you for joining us on the Overcomers Overcoming podcast series, where we profile those who have overcome or those who are in the process of overcoming any life topic. We have three objectives with this podcast series. Our first objective is we want you to know that whatever you're experiencing in life, whatever you're encountering, you're not alone. We want to enjoin you to let you know that we together can help you through whatever challenge you may have that at the time may seem too difficult to be able to overcome. Our second objective is to help you determine with a very confident resolve, there are multiple solutions, multiple factors involved in any life encounter. It's a matter of thinking into and thinking through the life situation you are encountering to determine the various options, the various solutions that are available to you. Our third objective is to help you with critical thinking skills. If whatever you're experiencing is a result of a decision you made sometime in the past, such that if you had a life redo, you would make a different decision, we want to help you determine the objective facts and factors to evaluate to help you reach a more informed decision. I'm Ron Cooper, founder of the Cooper Culture. I'm with my wife and business partner, Marty. Together, we are the Cooper Culture, and the Cooper Culture is sponsoring this podcast series. Today, we feature Eric Kuhn for the second episode of God's Design for Finances. Marty, there's almost an epidemic in the U.S., and it may exist in other countries, where we have people with a heavy debt load due to credit card usage. Eric addresses what we should have and how we can get out from the debt burden of credit cards. There is a good use for credit cards, but we need to have a disciplined approach to it. What are some takeaways our listeners can gain from this podcast? Ron, I think Eric was talking to the young person starting out, and he was saying, first, you need a budget. You need to save. You pay your credit card off at the end of the month and you set a goal for what you want in retirement. That goal will lead you to invest and you make good decisions. This whole budget thing and looking into the future is tough, but it is well worth it. And I feel like we are examples of how tough it was We made difficult decisions. We didn't buy when we couldn't afford it. And now we are living a life of choice. Marty, let's listen together. We hope this podcast will be useful to take an introspective look into our individual finances and take the appropriate action. Let's listen. Eric, it's good to have you back with us. For our listeners who are listening for the first time, I want to encourage you to go back to the first episode with Harry Kuhn, where we talked about just some general aspects of finances, how people are living out of balance, and a lot of what is causing this is the instant gratification type of syndrome, where we want it now, and we have the means through plastic to pay for it, And when asked sometimes, well, how are you going to pay for it? The response sometimes is, uh, well, somehow, someday, some way, uh, it'll all come about. But Eric, I don't think that a financially disciplined life is built on that kind of mindset. But help us, Eric, in living that disciplined lifestyle. One of the things from my perception, not being a financial planner, is some of us are living on the plastic or credit card, and we're living a life that is way out of balance. But is there a way we can have a credit card and have a balanced financial life? Ron, thank you again for having me. Absolutely, we certainly can. We need to live within a balance, and it all begins with a structure, a financial structure built within our own budget, our own lifestyle and our own budget of how much money we have coming in versus how much we have going out and then how much are we willing to put as a credit on our total balance of what we have financially because at the end of the day it's really what it is the bank is not going to loan you more money than they feel that you can pay back and then at what cost 
is that? So I think talking today, we need to talk about what are the reasons we start getting credit. So let's start from the beginning. When we first became 18 out of college, whatever, maybe 19, 20 years old in our mid early 20s, maybe we didn't have any credit cards at that moment, but maybe we do have student debt, which is another thing, but we're not going to talk about student debt today. We're going to keep credit cards because those are the ones that we can take care of and we could take care of those pretty quickly. But most people don't have a credit card when they first get out of college and yet they want to go buy a house or maybe they want to buy a car and they go to the dealership or they go to the realtor and they go to the finance people and they say, well, we'd love to say the car, but you have no credit. You have to be able to establish credit in our world in order to get things. Now, some of these things, you can have good credit and you can have bad credit. Good credit is something that, hey, I, I, I've established credit, but I'm paying off my credit card every month. Bad credit might be, I've got a credit card, I'm not paying it off every month, it's revolving. And if I miss a 30-day period where I don't pay it off, it's going to affect my score and drop my score down significantly. So they look at credit card score. So when we first begin our approach with credit cards and credit in general, we're establishing credit so we can get something that we need, like buying a house. Perfect example. I remember when I first got my condominium when I was a, a young person, I didn't have a credit card. And I had to go out and I had to get a credit card and I had to establish that. Credit cards are a good source of helping us but we got to be financially disciplined to pay them off. Let me interject here, Eric. My grandparents are telling me or have told me that really everything should be done cash in pocket. That cash if I pocket. never use a credit card, you know, once the cash runs out of my wallet, then I can't mm-hmm. overspend kind of thing. But Is it all right to use a credit card? Is that just a bad omen? Do I need to be a cash-only kind of person? Help me with that general mindset. The thing is that in our financial world, cash and carry seems to be as old school. Okay, We have now got to the point that if you walk into any convenience store and you look at anybody who's doing any transactions, they're pulling out the plastic. They're no longer pulling out the $20 bill out of their wallet. Mm -hmm. I'm from the school of cash and carry as much as you can, when you can. But if you have to use a credit card for some reason, as long as you know at the end of the bill cycle, I'm paying that credit card off. So if, if I'm, and we do this in my house. So we check our credit card account constantly to see and make sure where are we at in our balance of our budget. If I get to a point, my wife gets to a point and says, hey, we're at the limit and there's five days left before we roll into the next cycle. The credit card's taken out of the wallet and it's put away. And it's either you buy it with cash or you don't buy it. And I think that's a combination of both your, par- your parents saying cash and carry versus credit card. We have to be able to do both of those things. I still go the old school Hey, I bring cash with me and I pay where I can with cash. I'm a just a little bit more on the credit card side, but only because I'm the kind of person that it's hard for me to give up cash out of my wallet. I just see it there. I just like to eh, quasi hoard the money. So I'd rather use a credit card. So I may have a few more years life experience than you, Eric, but Mm -hmm. I do use a credit card and I have a great sense and I check my credit record or the the credit statement very frequently. So I know where I am. It's not that I'm, okay, now here's the bottom line to our listeners. I always, and I mean, this is literally always pay a hundred percent of the balance due. I never, never, never carry a balance forward on my credit card. So in that context, while I don't always pay cash for even a dollar 50 cent item, I know where I am on my credit spending such that I'm always able to pay the credit card balance. Mm -hmm. And that's excellent discipline. I wish a lot of our listeners would have that discipline. Unfortunately, I hate to say this, but I've been there. I've been there where I was over zealous, over zealous on credit card and credit card debt, where I wasn't doing that. I was not tracking it. And I got behind and I got behind to a point where we had to structurally figure out how we needed to get rid of this credit card debt 
and get away from these interest rates. So let me give you a few statistics here. 43% of the Americans carry a credit card balance over every month. That's a lot. That's nearly 50% of people that have one are carrying that over every month after month after month. They're not paying it off. 57% of credit card users use it for convenience, like yourself. That number is going to get higher if we get closer to going more of a cashless society. But it still comes down to the discipline. Where are you at in your budget? What can you afford to pay? And what can you afford to pay off every month? And if you can't afford to pay for it, don't buy it. It really comes down to that discipline. It can wait. If it, unless it's an emergency and that happens once in a while, then that's one thing. But if it's not an emergency and you don't need it, don't buy it. You know, if you can't afford to pay for it the next month. The, some other statistics I think that'll be really engaging for our listeners here. The average credit card debt held by generations, actually. Generations of 18 to 23 year olds carry about a $2,000 credit card debt. The millennials, 24 to 39 year olds, carry about $4,800 in credit card debt. Our Generation X, 40 to 55 year olds, carry over $8,000 in credit card debt. Our baby boomers, 56 to 74, carry close to 7,000, about 6,800. And the 75 and, and older generations are about $3,700. These are statistics. You can pull these up. Uh, Experian is where I got them from, 2019 numbers. But generally speaking, this is where you see people in the average carrying on credit card debt. Now, and if 43% of those people are carrying that over month over month, that's where it gets expensive. And what I think people need to understand is when they look at certain things, I believe they need to look at what is the actual cost. If I carry this credit card over month after month after month and pay the minimum that they require, the banks have you if you're doing that because they're earning an average of 14.5% interest on that money that you just borrowed. So, Ron, let me ask you, would you go to the car dealership and pay 14.5% on a loan for a car? Oh, good grief, no. I, there's no way I'd do that. And I think most of our listeners wouldn't do that either. But they do it every month on a credit card. Wow. So, if you're carrying $5,000, and you can look this up under bank rate. Very simple. You can go to bankrate.com. You can do this with your mortgages. You can figure out how to pay down your mortgage by going to bank rate and using their their calculator. They have one for credit cards. If I use an average balance of $7,000 at a 14.5% credit rate charge, a minimum payment of 4%, it's $280 monthly minimum payment that you would pay in on that. It would take you 133 months to pay off that $7,000 if you paid just the minimums. And you would end up paying $10,000, almost $9,900 in total credit and debt that you would pay. So that means you borrowed seven, you're paying back 10. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if you didn't have to do that and you had that extra $280 a month to invest, flip it around. Flip. Let's flip the numbers around. If I could take $280 a month and make 10, 12% of my money, now what am I doing? Eric, gosh, man, you're making a lot of sense. And there's some of us listeners who are mentally reviewing where we are financially. And some people have said, you just need to cut up your credit card. Stop. Almost cold turkey. But yet, I think what I'm hearing you say, it is good to have credit so we need it, mm -hmm. but yet, if I am undisciplined, and our listeners may not think of it that way, but if they, at least they can identify with what you're saying that I can't make full payments on my credit mm -hmm. card, to help develop the discipline, is it possible we may need to just wean ourselves? 100% from a credit card until we develop the discipline and then get back into a financially disciplined life of using a credit card. Um, help me out here, Eric. Right. I'm, I feel like I'm lost here. <laughs> I'm in a quandary. I don't know what to do. Well, you know what, Ron, it really is. It's um, Yes, if you are in a place where you're underwater, basically you're underwater, you're trying to swim as fast as you can to stay ahead of the game. But the water's rising and you're in this place where I've got this big credit card debt. I don't have enough money to live on 
so I can't pay but very minimums or maybe not all the whole credit card. Your best bet is to, and what I've, we've done, and I personally have done this, we've been able to go ahead and pay off the credit card debt because what we decided to do was instead of maybe spending the money on anything, I don't care if it's going out to eat once a week. I don't care if it's going to get your Starbucks every single day and think, well, that's my habit. I'm going to go spend $6 a day. Six times five, that's 30 bucks a week. 30 times four, that's $120 a month. I could probably pay off my credit card pretty quickly if I was transferring some of that money I'm spending on Starbucks on my credit card and got that paid off. Now, once I've established that, yes, do I go back to using that credit card? Maybe not. Maybe I need to reevaluate my whole budget and see where am I at before I pull that piece of plastic out and start using it again. I don't want to take you off what your thought process is, Eric, but for those of us who are out of balance based on this conversation, I didn't realize I was until you uh, helped me realize I am out of balance. Is there a matter of, do I need to start by almost literally taking a 30, 60 day period of time, where am I spending money on what and determining what is essential versus what is a luxury? I don't know that, well, let's just say a $6 a cup of Starbucks coffee tastes pretty good, Eric, but I don't know. Are you telling me that maybe that's not something that'll, that I really do need to sustain life, but there are some other things that are of a higher priority. Do I need to kind of prioritize my spending? Is that what we're leading up to? <laughs> yes, we all are. We all have to prioritize our spending. You know, and I, and I don't mean for those people who love their Starbucks, I'm not trying to alienate you out there. You know, everybody's got their, their kicks, and I get it. But, you know, I can go buy a can of coffee for $10. That will last me more than a month. I can make my cup of coffee before I go to work, put it in my container, and go to work fine on that cup of coffee and save a bunch of money. Okay? I can do the same thing at work. How many people go out and get lunch at work? Do they spend $10 a day, five days a week? That's a lot of money. It's $50. That's $200 a month that you're spending for lunch. But if I bought it and made it at home, I could probably spend $25 a month a month on enough food for every lunch that I need. Now I look like a schoolboy bringing a bag lunch in or maybe my metal lunch box. And, but... Gosh, Eric, I don't know. I, I'm not sure I can stand the image that that, that presents to me. But mm. um, you're, you're talking common sense, but okay. <laughs> you're, you're starting to be very real to me, the <laughs> mindset change that, that, that we're talking about. It takes 90 days. You think about it like that. When somebody will take smoking, somebody starts to smoke, they make it a habit. How long does it take for somebody to get stop smoking to create a new habit? It takes a good 90 days. You got to get it out of your system. You got to stop. You got to transition this. So it takes a 90 day cycle to be disciplined enough to say, yes, I finally got it. I'm on the road to a financial, financially successful plan. Where are you on the topic of debt as relates to credit card usage? Do you have a healthy look? at in view of credit cards, its use, and so forth. There's nothing inherently wrong with using your credit card. It's a matter of having the discipline to pay off every month without carrying charges and paying those high interests for items you need, but it is a matter of discipline. Is there anyone within your circle of influence who is struggling with debt, credit card usage? They just need to develop the discipline I hope you'll share this podcast with those, be willing to work with those to help them overcome whatever unhealthy spending habits they may have to help them restructure whatever they may need with their finances to be able to be on a path to have financial freedom, the choices they want to make at any time in life. We need to, as, as individuals, everybody needs to do it, and we can help you do that. You need to budget, create a budget, and I will tell you, like I said, I've struggled. I've been there. My wife and I did something very unique that people may not know about. 
a lot of these credit card or these banks have these introductory credit cards that they give. They will give you a 0% interest for 18 months if you transfer your balance. So let's just say I had $5,000 on a credit card and I wanted to pay it off. I could structurally, if I financially thought about it, transfer $5,000 off of that credit card that's charging me 18% interest, send that over to a 0% for 18 months, and then structurally pay that off. And you have to, you can't miss it. you got to pay that extra money and pay that credit card off with 0% interest. Mm -hmm. That makes a lot more sense. Instead of me paying an extra couple thousand dollars, an interest that I'll be paying by paying minimums, now I've paid 0% interest and I've paid off my debt. And I got rid of the 18% card and that one gets shredded. <laughs> so, yes. So. Let, let me just address the topic also, Eric, that let's just talk about the topic of, or address the topic of our financial risk as a family. Mm -hmm. I am a two-earner family and the, the term dink, I do income, no kids or whatever the situation is. Right now, I feel, you know, pretty I good. I've never heard that term before. <laughs> okay. Right now, I feel like we're pretty good, but is there an aspect of we need to look at what risk we are? In other words, what do we think the risk might be? What would the impact be if one of us lost our job? Mm. We're recording this during a period of COVID. Yes. And some people had no control. They lost their job. And yeah. They lost one or more incomes. And now, if we don't have some sort of uh, government-mandated debt relief or something like that, what is the impact on credit rating or whatever term you put to it of a late or no payment? Is that you know not real consequential, Eric, or where are we with that? It is very consequential. Every time you go on a cycle without paying your credit card, it is added into your score as a delinquent on your account. And if you go 30 days, it's a mark against you and it lowers your score. Obviously, as we know, the higher our score, our average scores, which is there's three credit agencies and they average them all together. The average is what we buy things with. If our average is 500 credit score rating, we're probably not going to get a whole lot of people who want to lend us any money. But if we are at 800, now we have a lot of people that want to loan us money because they know we are qualified individuals to pay off the debt. So your question is, hey, yeah, people are losing their, maybe lost their jobs. I've got to pay. You need to, again, it may require to make some dramatic changes in your life Getting rid of some things. I will tell you one thing that people probably would never want to get rid of. Maybe the cable in their house. Maybe if you've got kids and they all are on, um, you know, and how many people have their kids get cell phones and tablets and all these other things, you know. And I understand some kids need these for school. I get that. But what is extra? We need to look at the extra stuff. Do you need it? Mm -hmm. Or is there one? Maybe you got XM in your car. My wife, that's just the reason I'm bringing that up. It's because... We just upped our Sirius XM. But, you know, we negotiated the price down. You know, these companies will negotiate with you, too. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. Did you know that you can go to these credit card companies if you owe money and say, can I negotiate a better rate and get, my, get this paid off? They will work with you. They're not going to come to you and offer that. You've got to go to them and tell them where you're at and what you want to do in order to get back on track. I didn't know that, Eric. Gosh, how can I learn these kind of things? I mean, you're telling me something new. I guess maybe in the back of my mind, I kind of knew that a late payment, that's not good, but does that stay on a credit report for more it's than a couple five of years? years? Yeah, a lot five of times. years? Yeah. Wow. Five to, it could be five to seven years easily. They look at that on, on your credit history. You know, wow. if you go look, if you go and you go look at any, um, Go to buy a house or go buy a car, whatever. They're, they're going to look at your history. And if you've got some now, the older it is, it's been taken care of. Now, if it's still showing that it's that you actually not only delinquent it, but you also now have not paid it at all. And now they've hit you with 
a letter saying that you owe us this money and you're not paying it. That also shows up on your credit history. That is, that's not good. That's going to lower your score tremendously because now you're not even showing you can pay back the loan. Eric, I feel like I'm learning a lot that I've never known before. I don't know that courses like this are taught in school. No, I, I could would say that I, probably not. I could, I guess, if I had the tenacity, I could learn this on my own, but I just I'm not even sure where to turn, what the priorities need to be. As I just mm -hmm. in some ways I feel overwhelmed with the information that's out there and the situation I'm in, how can I work with you to help put this in order so that I don't feel overwhelmed? You've given me the sense that I have to change, but I don't even know how to start. Yeah. we got to get back to basics, and everything starts from being totally open, being honest with yourself, and being honest with your financial situation. A lot of people don't want to be honest with it. They want to cover it up. If they don't like something, they don't want to talk about it. You have to be willing to be willing to talk about it. Then we have to have a plan and we have to look at your financial budget and what are you paying on and what are the things you can get rid of that you don't need and how can we, not only do we not need to have the credit card debt if you can't pay it every month, I'm not saying you shouldn't have it, but you got to be able to pay it every month. Pay it off, not pay the minimums, pay it off every month. Having it's okay, paying it off every month is critical. We also need to have an emergency fund for the, just what you talked about. What happens if I lose my job? How am I going to pay my bills? That may be a topic for another day, but at the same time, three to six months of income in the bank to pay my bills every single month. we got to get people there because if they lose their job or get sick, where are you going to pay your bills at? Well, Eric, I three to six months of uh, income, I mean, that's that's something I can't even talk about. Uh, <laughs> I am paycheck to paycheck, quite honestly, to be honest but with you. But you know, I was too, Ron. I was there too. But we did a little at a time. It wasn't that we immediately took a whole bunch of money and every month we piled it in there. But we found the money within our budget to set it aside. It may be $100 a payday. It builds up. Over time, you have now created a nest egg to use for your emergency fund. You are now created a way to pay off your debt. And now what? You will feel better. You'll be living within your realm of your means. God never wanted us to live outside those means. He really wants us to live a structured life. And that structure can't be, hey, I'm just going to live for today and I don't care if I'm hocked up in debt and that is what it is, well then good luck because I can't help you because you don't want the help. But for those who want the help, it is possible to get out of debt. It just takes time. They can't do it overnight. You can't just like, you, you know, just like if you want to diet and lose 20 pounds, you can't just diet one day and say, I want my 20 pounds off. It doesn't work that way. There's a process. It takes time. And the same with this. Discipline, time equals financial freedom. Thank you for mentioning God. I just, through this conversation, Eric, I feel like there's hope. But I also am taking from this conversation, I'm in debt far enough that it's not going to change just in a couple of weeks. It may take several months to restructure, develop a new mindset, a new discipline, and so forth. But I just, I feel like I am uh, not on the, not losing hope, but I just, I just don't have the total fulfilled feeling that everything is all right. I quite honestly, the more you talk, the more I see myself living on the edge of, and oh my gosh, when you just mentioned what would happen if either I or my spouse lost a job? We wouldn't be able to pay our rent, our mortgage. And how can I get with you, Eric, to help work through these things? Do you work virtually? Do I need to come to you? How do we? Well, we can do it. I do a lot of virtual appointments. I think a lot of people prefer that, to be honest with you today. 
You can contact me at ecoon, E-C-O-O-N, at lefinancialservices.net. That's my email. I recommend you start there. Reach out to me. Tell me who you are. We need to get to know one another. Open up the, the communication line. See where you're at. Because I'll only work with people that really, really, really are wanting to make a huge change in their life. I can't help everybody, but I can help some. And I'm willing to do that. And, I'm, and I don't charge a fee for it. But I will structure and show you how you need to have a structured life and how to better utilize your funds that you have available to enhance your life in the future. It's a stepping process, one step at a time, building, building, building. Thank you, Eric. I am going to talk with my spouse okay. because I know that our finances have caused some stress in our relationship. And we just need to have a very candid conversation. And I just feel because of this conversation, Eric, you have inspired me to have this conversation. And we need to take a very deep, introspective look at our spending habits and restructure ourselves. It may be a little bit painful to do this, but you're helping me to think long term because, yes, as you said in the beginning, I am the kind of person I'm just thinking now can I have what I want now and sometime later? Well, retirement is, gosh, who knows, 40, 50, 60 years off. I can't even think that far out. A lot of people can't, but you know what? We can help you do it in such a way that it becomes part of your life instead of, oh, my God, I really got to do this? No, you'll be enjoying that you're doing it because once you see it building, you'll say, okay, I'm doing the right things. Eric, thank you. You've given me hope, and we look forward to continuing this conversation and having a better peace of mind than what I have right now with my finances. So very good. thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Ron. Where are you with your debt load? Did this podcast help you understand and possibly think into your personal finances? Or perhaps is there someone within your circle of influence, a family member, friend, or if you're a supervisor, maybe there's someone on your staff that needs the financial discipline to get their life in order. As with Eric, we have been through financial stress. We know what it is to have the stress of being uncertain where money will come from. Will I have enough to pay for rent, mortgage, the various things in life that make uncertain a lot of things about our life based on money. What is your view of money? Can you have too much? God has an order for us to have our finances the way they should be. There is a structure that says that we should give 10% first fruits off the top of our money to give to him for his works through a worthy organization there are many of us who at some point in our life would have said, maybe right now are saying, I just can't afford to do that because I'm so burdened with debt that I don't even know where money is coming from. I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I'm right on the edge of disaster. If you're in that situation, if you know of someone who could be in that situation, let's work together Marty and I know the freedom of being able to live a life of choice. We have put into practice most of these financial principles having come out of a debt that made us very uncertain, added a lot of stress to our marriage, but we've overcome. And as Eric says, it can take 90 days of a restructured debt, restructured spending. It's a mindset. But let's work together. It doesn't matter where you are in debt. There are people who have phenomenal debt who have overcome. There are plenty of examples of how this has happened. But as we work together, we want for you to know the total fulfillment, the freedom of mind, knowing you have the choice to do whatever it is you want to do. You are living within your risk tolerance. You are not concerned about losing a job. Eric mentioned having three to six months savings such that 
If you lost a job, if either, if your spouse lost a job, would you have enough income to exist for up to six months? That used to be a foreign concept that seemed to be totally unachievable, but I want you to know it is achievable. That when you develop the financial discipline, when you reprioritize, if that would be useful, your spending habits, and determine what you absolutely need and what is a luxury, you can get out of wherever you are and transition to that lifestyle of financial freedom and have the choices that you want to have. It is a matter of discipline, and when we work together, we can help you overcome whatever it is you're currently experiencing to have that total fulfilled life that, yes, we have a life of freedom. We hope that you'll subscribe to this series. We hope that we can warrant a five-star rating. We want to help you through any challenge you're experiencing in life. It doesn't matter what the challenge is. We hope you'll share this podcast with those within your circle of friends, your Facebook friends, your LinkedIn connections, any connections you have. Let's get the word out. Let's work together. Let's comment. Let's develop a group that can help people overcome anything they are experiencing, and enjoy this life of freedom. There are times that maybe some coaching could help a person overcome any challenges they're experiencing in life. Marty and I are certified life coaches through John Maxwell. We can help you overcome anything that may be an inhibition to thinking you can achieve the financial freedom of which we're discussing and anything else that you want to do to help you live your full God-given potential. We know what it is to have doubts, limiting beliefs. We want to help you through those to develop a confidence, a very healthy confidence that you can do anything to achieve a God-ordained goal. Let's work together. Let's help everybody experience the joy of having achieved and the financial freedom that our Lord wants us to have. Contact Eric Kuhn, E-C-O-O-N at lefinancialservices.net or call us at 410-586-1875 or send an email to ron at thecooperculture.com or marty, M-A-R-T-Y, at thecooperculture.com. We look forward to working with you.